Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and it's time for an updated mod spotlight on Computercraft. Hooray! It's updated to version 1.3.2 of Minecraft. Uh, this is Computercraft version 1.4.2. Lots of cool stuff. And uh, you know what? I'm pretty excited to show you the new features of Computercraft. Now before I get started, I want to give everybody a big heads up. If for some reason you're porting from a prior version of Computercraft to this version, you want to make sure to change your config files to your new block IDs. Uh, the config file format has changed from the old version of Computercraft to the new one. Uh, he's using the default Forge configs, so it should be pretty easy to handle because all the other Forge mods use the same Forge config style, uh, the format of the config files that is. So go ahead and make sure that you update because uh, if you're updating from a previous world to a new world, you'll definitely want to make sure that happens. And then once you do that, you should be in good shape. Now, if you want to start checking out the latest changes to Computercraft, stay tuned. All right, guys, so let's go into some of the new things that have been added. Uh, I'm going to get to printers. Don't worry, they're coming up, but I'm going to cover some of the other things first. First off, we've got Crafty Turtles that can now be upgraded to Wireless Crafty Turtles. How awesome is that? So uh, in the past, you only had a crafting turtle that was all on its own. You didn't have a wireless crafty turtle, so you didn't have any way to wirelessly craft items. But now you do, so you can set up all kinds of neat little computer craft turtle programs and make these turtles do your crafting bidding for you. I'm pretty excited about the potentials for this. Oh yeah, I can imagine actually quite a lot of scary potentials for this, so uh, it should be pretty neat. Wirelessly having your turtles craft stuff and then come back and bring you the results will be awesome. Another rather cool but rather minor feature as well is the ability to color floppy disks. It's pretty neat. You can make floppy disks of different colors, and these will be really useful if you want to store different programs or different types of programs on different floppy disks. I imagine once you have a lot of floppy disks laying around in your chest, it might be hard to track down what you're looking for. So maybe if you keep all your mining disks on uh, green floppy disks and all your you know crafting programs on red floppy disks, that might be a pretty cool feature. So lots of cool changes there. You can check out in the... Um, NEI screen if you want that pretty much all colors are available to you so you can pretty much go with whatever you want. Sweet. I don't know about you guys but I think I could come up with a lot of cool uses for all these different colors. Oh yeah. Very cool. Now, aside from some other various tweaks and bug fixes and porting to Minecraft 132, we do have a new block, completely new to us, called the printer. Now, printers are pretty cool. Let's check out the recipe for them right here. You can see it's some stone with some redstone in the middle and an ink sack at the bottom. So, uh, pretty similar crafting recipe to a lot of the other computer craft items. The printer has an interface that looks like this. It's really pretty simple. All you have to do is place your ink sack over here on the left, and that's going to be your ink for your printer. I'll just put a whole stack there for now. Paper goes all the way along the top row, and you'll see there's plenty of slots for paper. You can put six stacks of paper up here. I'm only going to put one now, but you can keep, you know, all kinds of uh, paper up in the top. It doesn't matter. It's just pretty much a buffer, a backlog of paper that's available to you. And all you have to do in order to start messing around with your printer is access your computer and do some cool stuff with it. So I've got my printer in Lua interactive mode, so I can just interactively play with this uh, code. You can go ahead and write your own program if you want. Pretty cool. So we've got paper here. First off, there's one command that you need to know in order to start interacting with any peripheral. Um, a printer act, uh, acts as a peripheral, but there's some other things you can use too. Um, you can go check out a list of all the peripheral commands on the Computercraft wiki, which of course I'll link here in the uh, description of this video. Now, in order to connect your printer, what you want to do is define a new variable. In this case, I'll just call it printer. And I'll set that new variable equal to peripheral.wrap, which means we're kind of connecting to it. And then you want to point to the right side because my printer is on the right side of the computer. Cool. And uh, one of the neat little texture details, by the way, is when there's paper in there, it has that little white thing on the top. And when there's not paper in there, it doesn't. Cool. I don't think there's any changes when ink sacks go in. Nope. All right, so now let's get ready to start printing. What we want to do is reference that peripheral by using the printer command and then a period, and then all the different functions that are available to you. In order to start printing on a paper, you want to do new page. And what that's going to do is it's going to feed a piece of paper from the supply line at the top and put it inside the line here. You'll also note that it grabbed an ink sack from the side, so it's going to use the ink in that ink sack to write this printer paper. So basically it combines these two together. And this white line here indicates that it's per currently got a piece of paper in the feed. And we got a true response to let us know that it successfully pulled a piece of paper and an ink sack in. We would have gotten false if there was no paper left to pull. Sweet. 
Now if you want to write text, all you have to do is printer.write. And in here you can put whatever text you want. Hello everyone, this is direwolf20. Cool. And it's going to write that on the page. Very neat. Um, you can also set a page title. And we'll give this a uh, printer tutorial. Cool. And I'll show you what the page title is all about there. Nice. And uh, don't worry about that 63. I'm pretty sure that this is a bug. Um, it's returning the number of pieces of paper left in the printer, which is the same as running the printer.getPaper level. So I'm wondering if that might be a bug and that the page title responds the same way as get paper level. I'm going to have to question Dan to wonder about that. Um, we can also get ink level if we want to find out how much ink is left in there. And you can see that that's also returning 63. And if I were to take some of that out, we can run it again and see there's only 31 ink left, but there's still 63 uh, paper left in there. Cool. Liking it already, right? Yeah, printers are cool. Uh, you can also get the current position of the cursor on the page. And that'll tell you that it's currently at um, the X horizontal of 36 and line one. And if we want to, we can set the printer position to uh, set cursor POS in parentheses one comma two. And that'll put it in the first slot in the left, as far left as possible on the second line. Neat. And then uh, from there, we can uh, also do a printer.getPage size to find out the size of the paper. Now, uh, I, the printer pages are only 25 long, so I suspect that my hello everyone, this is direwolf20 did not fit. So since I'm currently on uh, line two, uh, which I'll find out by doing that, I'm gonna do printer.write. Hello everyone, if I can spell correctly. This is, I'll just put this. And then we'll jump this guy down to line three and write his direwolf20. Cool. And when we're done playing around with our paper and finished writing, we can do printer.end page. And what this does is it returns true if there was paper in the printer currently, which there was, and it finishes writing. You can see the white line is gone and we've got our printed page. You can see the tooltip on the printed page is printer tutorial, which is the title. So when you set a page title and you give it some text, it'll make the tooltip whatever you put in there. Now when we put it on our hotbar, we can take this page and read it. Hello everyone, this is D. Yep, as suspected, it did overrun the line. Not a problem. Then I put down, hello everyone, this ran a uh, set cursor position to three comma one, and then I had a space before I typed is direwolf20, as you can see here. So everything printed on the page exactly as we would have expected. Pretty awesome. Um, if you want to be real smart about it, you could uh, take your uh, programs and split the characters on a long string like that and uh, make sure it only prints out the first 25 lines. But you'd have to write a program like that all by yourself. So there's plenty of cool features of these printers. Now another thing that I didn't tell you about is you don't have to just use ink sacks. You can go ahead and use cactus green, for example. And let's go ahead and do printer.new page. And we'll do printer.write. OMG, green text, cool. And then I'll do a nice printer.end page to spit the paper out. And we'll see here, it doesn't have a tooltip on it because I didn't set a title, but you'll also note that the text is green. That is cool. You can abuse uh, pretty much any die as far as I've tested so far. So let's do another new page and then we'll do, oh my God, red text, cool end page. Let's see what we got here. Sweet. I like it. So that pretty much covers all the neat new additions and changes to computer craft. The addition of wireless crafty turtles, a couple good bug fixes, and of course the colored discs. 
You can also use these neat printers here to print out a whole bunch of cool stuff and use any color dye that you want. Um, it would be pretty cool to be able to write some, uh, you know, code out on a piece of paper or maybe, you know, print out the results of a program that ran. That would be a lot of fun. So, hope you guys enjoyed checking out the ComputerCraft tutorial, version 1.4.2 of ComputerCraft. And uh, definitely go download it, check it out, play around with it a bit. And if you're interested in learning more, of course, I'll plug the fact that I have a ComputerCraft tutorial series going on so that you guys can go ahead and check out the basics of writing programs using these cool computers. This is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.